Let me tell you something. My reaction is, did I expect more from that Iranian, so-called Iranian-American journalist? No, I didn't expect more from her. And, uh, and it's a shame. It's a true shame. Print media ha- have done their jobs very well. Um, print, uh, really? What, what, what Western mainstream print media you think has done a, very, a good job? Well, the ones that, you know, uh, The Guardian has done it, you know, most of the, you, when you go put in Massa and demonstrations, mm-hmm. the print media comes out. Uh, I've done but, exactly that. Uh, I've done exactly yeah, that. I can't yeah, I imagine was, if, uh, so you're, you're, you're preempting me because I, I was going to come to this, but if you want go to go to it right now, I mean, I can't imagine if what just happened at Sharif University happened, you know, in, in London, you know, yeah. uh, or, or anywhere else in the world. I can't imagine that there'd be one article here and there. And yet, if you put them all together over the last fortnight, you, there's, there's a, a scattered number of them. But I mean, it's, to me, it's absurd. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe, I mean, we just, uh, you know, we had a historic demonstration here in Toronto, not just for the Iranian community, for Toronto, 50,000 people or more, that's, that's an event. And, and, yes. and the media basically ignored it. I mean, how that to me I is... I didn't follow the Canadian media. Uh-huh. But, but it, okay, the, the, the U.S. media, media the U.S. Know, media, but, where is you know, it? I'm talking about not about the demonstrations on Saturday, okay. but the entire situation in Iran I'm following up. You know, when you look, compare it to 2017 or 2019, sure, sure. we haven't seen that kind of coverage. We didn't see that kind of coverage. 2017, 2019, we've had daily protests from 2019 onwards from the teachers, the pensioners, and we've covered it in Kehan Life, but you don't see it. You haven't seen it elsewhere. No, no. So perhaps for me, as someone who has been covering this, and we have followed all these protests on a daily basis, um, I mean, you know, the the motto comes, beggars can't be choosy. Maybe I'm yeah, seeing yeah. the glass yeah, well. half full rather than half empty. But yes, I was hoping I was hoping CNN would do more. I was hoping BBC has done a lot. Um, I mean, four but articles. There's still more to be done. Four or five, four or five articles in the New York Times over the last uh, two weeks at, at the most. I mean, it's it's not. But New York Times as well. I mean, their uh, their piece today has aroused a lot of criticism. Yeah, it's, it was horrible. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's ho- again. But let me tell you something. <laughs> My reaction is. Did I expect more from that Iranian, <laughs> so-called Iranian-American journalist? Right. No, I didn't expect more from her. And uh, and it's a shame. It's a true shame. Mm. You know, that's all I can say for any Iranian, whether Iranian, Iranian-American, who's professed to be so in love with Iran, so in love with the landscape of Iran, mm. so in love with the archaeology, so in love with their far, the foreign minister, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mr. Zarif, and, you know, attending all, you know, briefings, whether covered or not. And then when something like this happens, shame on them. I'm sorry, shame.